Hey everyone, Ham here. In today's video I'm going to show you how I've managed to get my CSL DD working with the PlayStation 5 uh, for Gran Turismo 7 and that's by using one of these, a drive hub and also a Hori PS4 mini controller. So I'll just start off by explaining what this little device is for. So if you've got a non-PlayStation compatible uh, wheelbase like I'm using the CSL DD um, this will allow you to emulate it being an official PS4 wheelbase by using the chip that's in the controller to making the console think it's a genuine wheel. So the way it works on PlayStation, uh, they've got licensed chips that need to be in the wheelbases in order for games to uh, work with PlayStation 4 and the wheelbase to work with PlayStation 4. For Xbox, the licensed chip is generally in the the wheel rim itself. So in order to um, play games on PlayStation 4, you'll need a, a, an official PS4 wheelbase. So currently for Fanatec or Fanatic, you've either got the top of the range uh, DD1 formula wheel, which I think is like $1,400 or maybe even more, and the newly released GT DD Pro. So I'd already purchased my um, CSL DD on launch, um, so I didn't really want to pay for a whole complete upgrade kit. Uh, having said that, they have just now released the standalone wheelbase. But um, just to let you know, this works for the CSL DD for sure, because that's what I'm using. And also shout out to my friend Lincoln Clay, who's also using a Fanatec uh, DD1. He's um, using the same approach and he's got it working. So first of all, I'll just explain um, where I got the drive hub from and how you can get yours and how much it cost. So first off, you want to go to the Collective uh, Minds website. So currently this is only shipping to uh, within the UK at the moment. You might be able to find this in other locations, but this is where I ordered mine from and it was $89.99. And the controller I ordered from Amazon and I believe that was uh, £20. So you're looking at all in £110. So obviously if you've not bought a wheelbase yet, then just go for a PlayStation compatible one if you want to play GT7. Uh, otherwise, if, like myself, you've got a um, non-PlayStation compatible wheelbase, this is certainly an option for you. I just want to say this is where I got it from. You may be able to find us other locations because, like I say, my friend Lincoln Clay, he's based in the uh, United States and he was able to source one. Uh, I'll have to find out where he ordered this from, but I'll put a link to this website in the description below and also a link to this page. So if you're wondering if this will work with your wheelbase, um, just go to the web page and you'll see the um, list of supported uh, racing wheels. There's quite a few on here. Uh, it actually lists the supported racing uh, wheel rims. So I'm using the Club Sport RS wheel rim. And I also know for a fact that the McLaren GT3 wheel rim works as well. This is what Lincoln's been using. It also lists what pedals work. So in order to use your pedals, I'm using the pedals connected to my wheelbase uh, directly, but there is support for USB wheels either by the Club Sport adapter, or in the case of uh, the high sync felt pedals, you can also plug them into the drive hub in addition to the wheelbase. In terms of the shifter, I've not tested this yet for uh, GT7, so I can't comment whether it works. And that's because I'm still using my Logitech shifter. Now there is a co-pilot device apparently, which would let me um, use my shifter, but I may just upgrade to the to the uh, Fanatec shifter that will plug directly into the wheelbase. But again, I don't know currently if the shifter really works with the game. If anyone does know, uh, just put, put a comment uh, in the comments below <laughs> and let us know. In terms of games, here's a list of games that's been uh, tested on. Dirt Rally, so first of all, I'll say in terms of force feedback, I've tested this on Dirt Rally 2 on the PlayStation 5, and I've compared it to how it plays on the PC. And I've got to say the feedback does feel very similar. It's not quite as good. Um, and that's because, um, well, two, one reason it might be because it's a console versus PC version, but also um, in order for this to work, I had to run it in um, Fana Logic mode, which isn't the native Fana Tech mode. And that's because Dirt Rally doesn't seem to support it. However, that being said, it did feel very good and there's very minimal latency, if anything, 
between the two so I didn't really notice any obvious latency and the actual the way the force feedback felt felt very similar to the way it did on PC so I wouldn't be too worried about that. Just in terms of a list of supported platforms I'm going to be showing you um, this on PlayStation 5 so in theory this should obviously work for Gran Turismo on PlayStation 4 as well but if you have a PlayStation wheelbase and you want to run it on any of these Xbox platforms as long as you've got one of these uh, wheelbases here it should also work on Xbox but anyway this video is focused on uh, my particular setup and on Gran Turismo 7 so let's get on with looking at the device okay this is the little dinky drive hub it's got a um, rev indicator or a uh, gear shift indicator on the top which is pretty cool if your wheel doesn't have it and and the main thing is on the back you've got a mini USB port here which runs to the console a controller port for what you plug your PlayStation or Xbox controller into, uh, a wheel socket for the wheelbase, and then an accessory port here for if you want to run um, additional pedals or gear shifters, etc. So today I'm just going to be using these three. So I'm going to plug this into the PlayStation 5, plug in the Hori controller into here, and then plug it into the CSL DD here. Okay, before we get going with the GT7 example, I've just brought up the list of Fanatec wheels. And the reason being is I would advise if you're going to try and run this, you uh, use a PS Ready wheel. Uh, that's because in order to switch modes on the drive hub, you need to be able to press the uh, share and options button together to toggle between the, the two different modes, which I mentioned is the Fanatec mode understands how Fanatec wheels work or the Fanalab mode where it pretends your wheelbase is a uh, Logitech wheel and tries to map the, uh, the the buttons on the wheel to what would be a Logitech wheel. So uh, in order to switch between the two, you need to press the option and share button together. So what you'll want to do is find your wheel on the Fanatec website. Uh, so mine's Club Sport RS, then go to downloads and then get the quick start guide. So if I just bring up the Club Sport uh, wheel quick start, you'll see here that it says the uh, share button, well, the options button, the share button are buttons five and six, which is here and here. So I've just marked them with the, the, the caps here on my uh, wheel rim. So holding these two will switch the drive hub between the two modes. So just a reminder, if you're using the CSL DD, you'll want to put the wheelbase into a Club Sport Wheel 2.5 mode. So by pressing the power button here, this should be yellow. Um, I'm not sure how it works on the Fanatec uh, DD1 or DD2, but there will be a CSW 2.5 mode you'll want to put it into in order for it to work with DriveHub. Okay, with everything plugged in, the um, thing you'll want to do is check what mode you're in. So you um, check that by pushing the share and options button down together. and it should flash on your wheel rim like I says USB then L is for the uh, for the Logitech mode and that's the mode you want to be in for Gran Turismo um, although the Fanatec mode which if I'll hold the buttons down again you'll see an F appear so that's now in Fanatec mode so if we go into the game we go down to settings go to control settings go to button assign it's opened up the uh, CSL Elite racing wheel mapping so that's because we've got it in Fanatec mode um, now in theory this should be the best way to play the game uh, but the problem is with it in Fanatec mode there seems to be this issue where I believe the um, refresh rate of this, the feedback to the drive hub is potentially too much and it causes slowdowns with the game. So for every 60 seconds of real time, you only experience 50 seconds of game time. Uh, and I only found this out when someone pointed this out on one of my um, previous streams where if you actually look at the video counter for one minute's worth of video time, only 50 seconds of uh, game time elapsed. So 
was potentially a good way to play some of the um, the difficult challenges you're sort of playing in matrix style bullet time however the flip side to that is um when you play in multiplayer uh, what seems to happen is everyone appears to be running in normal time and your game seems to run slower and they just disappear off so in the multiplayer example in my last stream i just couldn't understand why everyone just left me for dust off the start line and i couldn't keep up so anyway just to be aware if you're running this solution you want it in the um, final logic mode where i believe the feedback isn't quite as good but from from switching between the two it's barely noticeable and for, for the sake of it running smoothly just just leave it in a uh, final logic mode at first i thought it was the game was slowing down due to the ray tracing but uh no it's definitely using drive hub it's a strange bug i don't know if it'll get fixed in a future firmware i'm running the latest firmware 2.07 and that doesn't seem to fix it so yeah just something to be aware of make sure you run it in final logic mode now the reason i brought the mapping screen up is because if like me you don't have enough buttons for the equivalent of what's on the, um, the screen here you'll potentially want to remap some of these uh, so I can't remember which one I did but I had the MFD up so I'm um, using a little controller here this directional stick here the um, the funky switch 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 relates to the, the d-pad here on the screen so I, I basically rebound that because I think this was windscreen wipers or something um, so just keep in mind depend on your wheel you're gonna have to figure out how the mapping of your Fanatec wheel relates to the Logitech G29 uh, slash G23 wheel okay in terms of settings I've got the force feedback set to max torque of 4 and sensitivity set to 3 and then and on the wheel I've got the following so sensitivity I've got that set to 800 but you'll want to um, potentially change this depending on which cars you drive and a quick way to test that is you turn the steering wheel sideways and the in-car steering wheel you want to line up with how you've got it in the, in reality uh, sensitivity so 800 force feedback you want that 100 to get the maximum torque obviously if you're on a dd1 you'll probably want to turn that down in case you rip your thumbs off you'll want that 100 percent to make sure there's no clipping and then turn it down in the game if it's um too strong so turn that max torque down and then the other important one is int so which is the in interpolation uh so if i remember correctly this is for uh, if you're using a wheelbase or a game that's got a low refresh rate of for force feedback this basically smooths out the uh, experience so given that we're emulating a logitech wheel i suggest you put that to the maximum of 20 uh, to get the best experience and then if you're experiencing a lot of uh, wheel wobbling on some of the straights uh, play around with the fei i've got mine set 80 and there was another setting the force feedback i think that's the sharpness of the feedback i think i've got that on 70. so they're the two to look out for if you're finding it's a, it's a bit wobbly on the straights so we're up and running i'll uh, just say feedback is pretty reasonable you know it's not acc competition so it was competition level of uh, feedback but it's, it's not bad uh, and like say the comparison between dirt rally on the pc and the playstation 4 was um was pretty comparable really so this is a uh, one of the license tests that i've been trying to get gold on as you can see from my record time i'm very close but that's with it in um fanatec mode sorry phanologic mode what I'll do I'm going to switch it back to phanatech mode now so you can see just so you can see how the game slows down uh, 
just a reminder as to why you don't really want to be using this mode, particularly when you're playing it multiplayer. And actually, the um, the frame rate seems to vary. I think according to the amount of feedback, you can stay on the track. So it's not as if it's well consistent, consistently slow. And if you look at the countdown timer now, or the clock, should I say? Those are very slow seconds. There, it's got really slow, which is actually quite off-putting. So yeah. Okay, there you go. Hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, if you did, give the video a thumbs up. It really helps with the channel. And also, if you've got DriveHub and you've got it working on a different setup, uh, just put some details in the comments below. It might help other users that stumble across this video that don't have my exact configuration while trying to figure out how to get it to work properly. All right, that's it from me. Until next time, bye for now.